Hi, I'm Nicole Gilbert, and this is the Stop Scrolling, Start Sewing podcast. Each Wednesday, join me as I share the ins and outs of that quilt life. If you don't have a sewing machine, can bust out a pretty fly Y seam, or you're just looking for the latest and greatest quilty news, this is the podcast for you. Okay, folks, so this is season three, episode 12 of the Stop Scrolling, Start Sewing podcast. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. Thank you for spending some time with me, uh, whether you're driving to work or you're watching us on YouTube. So this week is going to run just a little bit differently. Usually we chat about the quilt on the wall before diving into our discussion for the day. However, I'm so excited because today I am joined by Natalie Pratt of The Ginger Quilter, and you may know her at, from her amazing subscription box, The Ginger Quilter Box. So I have this phenomenal interview and I cannot wait to get to it and I cannot wait for you to meet her. Uh, I have had the pleasure of meeting her uh, at this past quilt market, uh, and we went and had a mutual dinner out at a friend's home, and it was just delightful. So without further ado, let's dive into the interview. Okay, folks, so just as I promised, today we are here with Natalie Pratt, and Natalie is of the Ginger Quilter. You may recognize her from either her Instagram account or from her fabulous subscription box, the Ginger Quilter Box. So hi, Natalie, how are you? Hey, Nicole, thanks so much for having me on. I'm doing great. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. As soon as I was learning more about the box, I was like, oh... My peeps need to hear from Natalie. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm glad to be here. Oh, good, good, good. So I want to make sure that everybody knows exactly who you are in your own words. So would you mind telling us a little something about yourself, maybe how you got started in quilting and where the idea from the box came from? Yes. Let's see. Well, I'll start with how I got started in quilting. Um, I grew up with a really, really... My grandma was a, an amazing quilter, but as a kid, I like had no interest in it, whatever is grandma's thing, you know. Um, but then as I got older, like in a teenager, I did like one patchwork quilt kind of as like a church project. And then um, so that was like my first experience, but really it didn't stick. And then as when I got married, I don't know if everyone else feels this way when they get married, you get that kind of like, I want to create this as a house. You know, I don't, I'm sick of my single apartments being, you know, not putting anything on the walls. I just want to make this really homey. So I started sewing um, stuffed animals actually was my first dip into sewing for myself. Um, Cause I just thought they were fun. Um, I guess that doesn't really tie into home decor, but you know. It, it was <laughs> I'm gonna say God bless you. Cause I've tried to sew a stuffed animal and it is uh, not the easiest. <laughs> You're right. And maybe that's not where I should have started. Some of those <laughs> animals are a little rough, but <laughs> some of them still live in my house. So. Um, so then I had a sister who was, who was into quilting and she kind of would show me fabrics and like, oh, you gotta see this, you gotta see that. And so I fell in love with this one line by art gallery, Barry J. Um, it was the Joie de Vivre line, and I just loved it. I would go look at it all the time on the internet, and like probably twice a day, I would go look at it. It's like, okay, I should probably just buy this. And <laughs> so I think I had a birthday coming up. And at that time, buying like a whole back quarter bundle, that was like a lot of money. You know, I was young, new married, so... Um, I got it for my birthday and I decided to make a quilt. I made a cluck cluck sew pattern and um, I made this quilt and it was for my daughter for her bed. And I thought this has got to last her till she goes to college because <laughs> this quilt took so long and was so hard and I'm, you know, it's not like I'm going to make any more of these. So it's better <laughs> last her. But she didn't even really like it that much. So, um, but, you know, that's the story of making quilts for your kids. Um, so, anyway, that kind of just got my, my wheels turning. I got really interested in it. And then a friend of mine invited me to the quilt guild that was close by to our house because she was involved in it. And 
then it just was a big tumbleweed of, you know, I got totally immersed and um, yeah, so that was how I started quilting. And then it's the story of how I started my box, <laughs> which kind of came from the same thing. I was just really diving in deep to the quilting industry and um, loving every minute of it. So I ran across the Maker Valley box, which was a subscription box by Maker Valley, Holly this way. And um, I loved it. I think I was a member for like five or six months until she decided to stop. And I was so bummed, mm. you know? So, I mean, I totally understand they've got other things going on in their business and it just wasn't a good fit. So, but I was bummed. I was like, every month I looked forward to this. Well, where am I going to get my little fix in the mail and all these cute kits? And there was a good way for me to try new fabrics that I probably wouldn't have picked myself, but that I did love. Um, so that was probably, let's see, the end of 2019. And then in 2020, I started thinking, well, why don't I do it? You know, I can do this. I can pick fabric. I can pick patterns. And so I, the wheels started turning, I think in like February is when I registered my business. And then um, I announced in April that I was going to do it. And then June was my first box. So it's just kind of been a, a process since then, built up and grown and been doing it ever since. So it has been kind of a whirlwind for you because I kind of thought that this had been in the works for much longer than it has been because you are a beautifully well-oiled machine at this point. Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm like flattered that you think that. I don't know what you <laughs> So, okay. So when it comes to the boxes, what, let me back up a little. What can people expect in a box? Like what are you curating together each month? Yeah. Every box comes with five items. So it's going to be a pattern and that pattern could be for a table runner, a quilt, a table topper, a pillow, any, even a bag. Um, and then it's going to come with all the fabric you need to make that. And um, usually if it's a quilt, it's just to make the top. Um, but if it's a smaller project, I do my very best to include everything you need to make it because that's kind of the point, right? If you have a kit, you want everything that you need. So um, so anyway, that's what, okay, so sorry. Pattern, fabric to make it. You get a notion, which um, could be like a tool or a, something you might need to make the project. Um, and then you're going to get a treat and an extra gift. And, um, the extra gift could be a scrunchie. It could be a bath bomb. It could be a chapstick. It's just like whatever goes with the theme of the box. Like this last month, it was a pair of mittens. So oh, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. So it could be anything. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And then now that leads into my obvious next question, which is how do you choose <laughs> which which things make it into the boxes and how do you choose what goes with what because some of those items I mean obviously your pattern and your fabrics are going together but your notions could be anything how do you choose yeah. what goes with what and then also how do you choose in general like what pattern it's like picking it's picking between your children it's like Sophie's choice <laughs> so I usually start with the Pattern and fabric, it's a little bit chicken in the egg. Because um, I might see a fabric that I really like, but I can't decide if it's going to work until I know what pattern I'm picking for. And so I might have one in mind, and then I kind of audition it with different patterns to make sure it's going to work um, logistically if I can get that fabric or if it's going to look good. Um, so there's a little bit of that. and But I would say normally I start with the pattern. Um, I can't... Because of my, you know, I do have size restrictions. I can't send a king size quilt. So I do with, um, uh, you know, what, what's going to work to fit in the, the budget and the actual size of the box that I'm shipping. And then the fabric usually comes along pretty quick. Um, sometimes I'm picking from specific lines. Sometimes I'm kind of putting my own bundles together. That, that just depends on, I guess, how I'm feeling. I don't think too hard about it. And then... Um, and then the notion, if there is a notion that really closely associates itself with the project, um, then that's an easy pick. But, you know, 
I need the fabric marking pen. That's what it was last month. Um, if it needs like a zipper, if I'm so sending a bag, it's like, oh, perfect, a zipper, that's check. Um, and then other times, if there's not one that is just like the obvious answer, those are good times to send in some of the basics, like a new set of embroidery scissors or a rotary, um, like new rotary blades or some thread or a seam ripper, stuff like that. So um, I try to rotate, make sure I'm not sending, you know, eight seam rippers a year, <laughs> even though we probably need them, to be honest. But, <laughs> so yeah, it just, it rotates. And then the treat and the gift, I try hard to stay on theme uh, and those are just like the fun ones to pick. I mean, it's all fun, but those are extra fun. <laughs> So speaking of picking things that will fit in the box, mm -hmm. how do you fit processing in? I mean, do you have a storefront? Do you have a warehouse? Where are you doing all of this? Because I can only imagine the amount of fabric you need to, <laughs> to, I, to send out. It's all in your house. And oh, holy. <laughs> yeah, right now it's all in the house. So, um, it started that I would prep everything in my dining room because I have a long dining room table. And it was like that until like a couple months ago. And so every month I would just take over the whole room and we couldn't eat on the table, you know, eat at the bar. And, but um, anyway, so my husband was, I think, starting to get a little tired of the constant mess in the dining room. So we have one we have an office that never really gets used. And so we decided to convert that into my stock room and my prep room. So now the mess is at least behind a door instead of like in plain view of the whole house. Um, and so I do store a lot in my garage. I store some things like the cardboard boxes get stored outside in a carport. Like just, it really is like, it takes over, it's everywhere. I know the takeover jam very well. I host sew alongs and I do kits for these sew alongs. Oh, yeah. And there are times where I'm just like, just nobody touch anything. Yeah, it's fine. So this half of the house is mine now. Yeah, so this is mine. It's fine. Over there. It's fine. <laughs> and we move a lot. So sometimes I'm like, okay, so it turns out you're all sharing a room this time. <laughs> Because oh, yeah. I need space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta have prep for your kids. And, oh my yeah, God. I know. I really should have thought about which one I was prioritizing in my house: the kids <laughs> or the fabric. <laughs> That's a hard one. It, it is. Now that is the ultimate Sophie's choice. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and yes, my kids are elementary age and they're not listening to this. <laughs> yep. How's it going to be? Yeah, we are good. Okay. So what's your favorite part of the process of like putting the boxes together? I think picking is my favorite. And I also really like that I get to sew up samples. I I can't sew up samples every single time, um, but I do most times. And so sewing up the sample is really fun and showing that off. I have an amazing photographer that makes everything look absolutely magical. Like, I don't know how she does it, but oh man, she's so talented. So um, I love sewing it up and then seeing how she makes it look so pretty. Um, I just love that. that part. Uh, that's awesome. And I bet you she's pulling the items out and going, how is she making this so pretty? <laughs> right. I know. I love that in, like, with anyone who's not a quilter, if they see something that you quilted, they think you're a wizard. They truly don't know how that happened and what you did. And you're like, oh, it was easy. It was straight lines, whatever. You know, it's like, you're magic. You know? <laughs> So. Well, it's funny because you were mentioned your grandmother and I come from a family with zero like sewing, crafting, <laughs> like my mom looks at me like I am crazy pants. <laughs> like She's like, I have no idea where you came from. I have no idea why you do the things that you do. And so she does. She'll come into my sewing studio and be like, what goes on in here? How do you do that? Yeah. yeah. And so I always have quilts hanging like on the wall behind me, always. Yeah. And so every time she comes in, she's just like, it's different. There's so many of them. So many, you know. They're like, you know, I do this for a living, right? <laughs> like, yeah. 
Exactly. I'm cranking these things out at a pace that is not like feasible for the average person. Not the average person. Yeah. Not the yeah. average person. Yeah, it cracks me up. So, what? Just because this just popped into my head, so I apologize if that was abrupt. Um, yeah. What is something that you wish subscribers knew before they subscribed? Ooh, that's a tricky question. Um, <laughs> before they subscribed, I think just that the whole point is that like this is your monthly reminder to sit down and be creative. So like you're a better person, well, I'm assuming you and me, you're a better person when you're spending time doing something creative. And I've seen that in my own life, in my family's life, I know that's true. So this is the point. That's the whole point is so that you have time to sit down and be creative. So if you feel like panicked that you're behind, you're behind a month, like it's fine. That's, that's not why we're doing it. This is not meant to stress you out. This is just for you. So just make sure that you're spending time on yourself. And that's the point. It's not another thing to check off on a to-do list. It's supposed to be fun, but don't make it intense. That's okay. Amen, sister friend. So I, obviously, the podcast is called the Stop Scrolling, Start Sewing podcast. And if everybody would just put down their phones, just one of those times that you're sitting mindlessly scrolling, put down your phones and go create something, we would all be better people. And like, oh, yeah. So that. Yeah. Like genuinely, like my husband will look at me and be like, I think, I think it's time to go, go sew. Okay. <laughs> Usually, usually it's about the time where like the pasta pot is bubbling over. There's like three kids running around my ankles and he's like, this, this might be a good time for you to step away. (laughs) Yep. I know that very well. Yes. So what can, okay. So what's coming up next? And I'm totally, I get it if you can't say what's coming up next, but what, what is coming down the pike for the box and for you in general, because obviously you are an entity entirely of yourself. <laughs> yes. Let's see. So um, coming up, I think this is going to air after the end of November. But um, so end of November, I am launching some gift subscriptions, getting ready for Christmas. So um, yeah, that'll be really fun. And then. I will be shipping my Christmas advent calendar box in the next day or two, which is exciting. This was kind of an experiment this year of, um, I think everybody knows the advent calendar boxes every day you get to open a new little gift. So I didn't want to do 25 gifts. I wanted to do 12. So I did 12 days of Christmas because that felt like something I could handle the first time I'm doing this. And so this, I ordered like, super custom packaging, manufactured this packaging, which is a whole new ball game for me. So finally the boxes are gonna be ready tomorrow. I'm gonna pick them up and ship them. So that'll be all through the month of November. And then looking into the next year, um, I think I really wanna improve that Christmas box for next year and do a lot of things differently. I I learned so much in this process, but I wanna try and do that differently and then the ginger quilted box is hopefully just going to keep on going the way it's going and um, and growing and growing. Ah, so. uh, that is awesome. We are big advent calendar fans in our house, so that makes me very excited. I mean, obviously from a kid point of view, like you know, one's got the Harry Potter Lego advent calendar, and he's oh, yeah. like, "Did I get Dumbledore yet?" But <laughs> but I love advent calendars, so that's really exciting to me. I know that you mentioned. Um, Christmas subscription boxes. So is this something that you can gift? And is this a gift of a gift of a whole subscription? Do you have one-off boxes that somebody could purchase to to gift to someone else? So yeah, that's that's the the idea. idea. I think that when you say you're going to gift a subscription, that's intimidating for the gift giver, right? Because you're like, well, how do I cancel it? I don't want to sign up to a life sentence, you know? (laughs) So... um, So the gift subscriptions are just bundled like three and six month subscriptions that are charged up front one time. There's no recurring payment. So you don't have to worry about 
how do I inform this person on canceling their gift? And, you know, so yeah, that's um, just upfront. You pay once and then for the next three months or six months, they're going to receive that gift on repeat uh, every month. Oh, that's awesome. And that is because that is kind of like an awkward conversation. Can you imagine? Be like, hi, mom, I love you, but I don't love you 12 months of quilting. <laughs> I, love I only love you three. <laughs> yep. Right. Uh, yeah. So that is that is awesome. And it's overall, though, is it the same box that everybody else is getting through the subscription? Yep. It's the very same one. You're just um, you're just ensuring they get that up front you know, or you're, you're just paying for it up front so they know exactly what to expect and you're going to get a little card in the mail that says this is um starting january 1st you're going to get three months of this subscription box and so you have something under awesome. the treaty so they can open something and then you'll be able to they'll be able to enjoy it oh that that is awesome i like that a lot so i have a question um I say that like I'm not doing an interview. Like now I'm going to ask if it's okay if I ask you a question. <laughs> um, so my listeners, I have like a wide variety of listeners. I have listeners that have gone through my Learn to Quilt in 60 Days program. So they are very new quilters, like very green. And then I have listeners who are like, Sometimes I just need the common sense of it all. Thank you, Nicole. And so where would you say your box falls as far as the patterns go? Like, is a beginner going to get in over their head with the patterns that you give? And is somebody who's a little bit more advanced going to sometimes get bored with some of the patterns that you provide? How does that yeah, work? That's a good question. Um, I would say most of my patterns probably go with confident beginner. Okay. Um, similar, like the little X's behind you, that kind of quilt, mm -hmm. kind of along those lines. Someone who knows what they're doing, we might be doing half square triangles, um, and there might be some one or two tricky spots, but you're going to make it through, right? Mm -hmm. and every once in a while, I've sent like a bag, and sometimes bags get tough. And so from my own experience with the bags and the feedback I've gotten from my subscribers, I think... Um, I really need to keep that in mind going into bags. I don't send bags very often, um, but when I do, just remember that like bags are hard, so let's not overwhelm people. So what I do shoot for is like confident beginner, early intermediate. That's okay. kind of what I'm going for. I'm not going for anything to um, overwhelm you, but to maybe push you a little bit, maybe expose you to something you haven't tried before, but not to overwhelm you. Oh, that is awesome because I think that that is, well, one, I know that many of my students, like when they're done with Learn to Quilt, they are able to do half square triangles and flying geese using like all of the methods. Um, yeah. So, and then pretty much once you've got that, you can make quite a few quilt patterns. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and an advanced quilter doesn't get bored with an intermediate quilt. Like you just right. don't because it's like, oh, that was fun. I didn't cry while I made that. Yay. <laughs> I actually want to do that again. Okay. Yes. Uh, but I do think it is also good to stretch boundaries because we can often get too stuck in our ways and then we're not being creative anymore. We're just automated, auto, like on autopilot, which isn't always a bad thing. Palette cleansers are good, but we do want to push things so that we can figure out what is kind of the next level we can take our own personal creativity too. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that is awesome. Okay. So we've talked about the box taking over your house. <laughs> we've talked about your favorite part of the process and also how you learned to quilt, which was not from your grandmother, even though apparently she was a sewer, which I totally feel that that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's get into some rapid fire questions. All right. Okay. So, Ready? Okay. all right. I mean, and I say rapid fire, but obviously I'm quite a verbose individual. Like I'm never good. <laughs> I'm never good at rapid fire. I'm always like, so let me tell you about that time in fifth grade. So don't feel too much pressure. <laughs> okay. So what is your favorite quote block? 
Oh, man. Yeah. For, for some, some reason, the Dresden, Dresden plate, plate is coming to my mind. mind. I, I really love that. It was, <laughs> it was, was like a pie. <laughs> It was one of those quilt blocks that I didn't know was not like a beginner friendly block. And so I, I started way too soon in my journey, but I actually really love it. So. Oh, that's awesome. Um, that is not mine. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the Dresden plate. Me and we're not homies. <laughs> well, that's fair. That's fair. It, it's a little, yeah. Has all oh, good for you. This is why, this is why there's people like me and people like you. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. So, what technique do you want to try but haven't yet? Scalloped border. Really? And you haven't that's done that? It's been a goal for a really long time, and I actually have a commissioned quilt that they want a scalloped border, and I'm like, okay. Well, I guess this is when I'm going to try it. So no. let's hope this is well. Nice. How are you? How are you planning on finishing it? Like what like, kind of binding? I, yeah. I think. I, I still have some reading to do, but I believe you just use bias binding. Yeah, and bias and miter. Yeah, yeah really easy. use those curves. So. so, I've done it quite a few times. And one suggestion, I don't know if you have a serger. If you do, this is super easy. If not, you, oh, you do have a serger. Surge the scallops. Oh. And then they'll be like super, super flat. Okay. And super tight. Uh -huh. And it will make manipulating that. They'll be like tight, but they'll be a little bit stiff because they'll have those extra threads. Just use like a three strand narrow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Make, this is cool. Thank you. It will make hey, all the difference. I'm going to let you in my post. Yes, I want to see pictures. <laughs> see, I'm terrible at rapid fire. I'm not supposed to interject in rapid fire. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I needed that information. <laughs> Um, okay, so do you have a designated sewing space in your home? I do. I, do. I have I an, an office. office. It's, it's funny. funny. I have my office, and then we have the office in our house. <laughs> so my office is a bedroom that we converted into where I was going to work. And then when I moved out of the dining room to the, the office, that's what became my storage room. So my girls will say, where is it? Where is this thing? Do I ask them to go get it? Oh, it's in my office. Which, Which one? <laughs> My office or the office? <laughs> no, I kind of have <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead out on a limb and I say this because this is how it is in my house. Is your husband's office the end of the, the sofa? <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. He has a room in the basement, which I feel really bad. It's, he had to like convert a closet into where he keeps all of his like hobbies and gun stuff, and because he's really into like long range shooting and stuff, so. He has oh, a little hole in it. Our and I have... would get along. <laughs> yeah, right? Because your husband's in the military, so he probably is like deep into that stuff. My husband's yes. not in the military, but he's still deep into that stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, he gets a little upset sometimes because like his office, like with all that kind of stuff, is in the garage. And he'll be like, uh, you look really snug and toasty in your space. How come my space is yeah, right. basically outside? <laughs> yeah, it definitely is like that if I have to. Yeah. Okay. It happens. That's why we love them. It all works. It all works. I know. They understand us. <laughs> so what is the most important thing that you've learned during your sewing journey? Oh, let's see. I think, I think kind of harkening back, back to what I was harkening back to what I said earlier is that like creativity really matters to me and my mental well-being and I it's not like when I feel down or um cranky or something like that as much as maybe like therapy or going on a walk would help I think I can also look at um am i being creative am i doing something to fulfill my my own development my just because type of creativity so um and that's easy to get lost when i'm doing my business because it's like oh i'm always being creative i'm always sewing well no that's not always the case because i'm always working so if I am not taking time to sew something just because or just for the heck of it or as a gift for someone I love, then that matters too. Even though I'm always in the sewing realm, I need to take time for that for me. And that helps me be a better person and a better 
uh, mom and a better, better wife, wife, all those things. Yes, I 100% agree. So, what are you listening to while you sew? Oh boy, <laughs> it's a wide <laughs> gamut. Um, I love true crime podcasts and shows, but I do have like a limit. I can't go too far. For, like I can't go for too long because then I'm like, oh man, this is too much. And so then I need to go like the light, lucky stuff. And I also, if it's like too dark of one, then I go, oh, no, I gotta go back. So, um, so okay, true crime. And then I love. Um, business books and podcasts because I'm always trying to like grow my business and and become better and then when I do need that light fluffy stuff I really love kind of Regency era Jane Austen type either it's the books on, on Audible or watching the movies off in the corner of my eye while I'm sewing so those are the things I love pretty wide um, that awesome. is awesome yeah so I am like a lot of the things are the same. However, I will say that like I have a focus problem and so I can't watch anything that I haven't seen one million times yes. already. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes like my husband will come into my show and he'll be like, are you watching Gilmore Girls again? <laughs> like, you know, no judgment, yeah. okay? Yeah. No judgment. There was some Gilmore Girls a couple months ago going on in my show. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you need some lighthearted. It's just a fluff. Yeah. It's just like why we watch The Office for yes. the 80s. Yes. Fluff. Yes. So speaking of true crime podcast, though, which one is your favorite? I, I listened to one that was, I think, Bear River. It was either Bear River or Bear Creek. And it was, what I liked about it is that there was like a resolution. It was solved eventually. And it took a long time to solve, but... Um, so that was super satisfying was that, but, um, but I also love ones that are just about like heists, whether it's like art heists or, or stuff like that. Those really capture my attention. And so I love those ones. Yes. And I agree. Cause I don't like when things get too dark. Like, I don't like, please don't mess with women and children. I can't handle it. <laughs> like I just, I can't, I just, I can't, but Whatever. And also, again, I just have to reiterate, I'm terrible at rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get it. It's not we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then here's the last one before we dive into all the ways that the listeners can find you, because I know at the end of this conversation, they're going to want to know. Okay, <laughs> okay. So what is something you would tell your just starting out quilty self? I would say like the quilt police is all in your head and because a lot of times we think oh someone's going to see that that corner didn't match up or someone's going to see my binding was wonky or but like there actually is no quilt police and that um, it's all in your head so you just tell the quilt police to shove it and carry on your way because everyone who sees you make a quilt especially those who aren't quilters think you're a wizard so um so yeah, yeah you're, you're just, just learning, learning and give, give yourself, yourself some grace, grace. yes a hundred percent and also over the years i have gotten the chance to work with some incredibly accomplished sewers and those quilts are not always perfect oh yeah and, totally. yeah and sometimes i think that that is one of the worst kind of like misrepresentations we give because everything looks good when it's slightly blurred in the background. Like, and it's like, yeah, I mean, the quilt behind you is gorgeous. Um, (laughs) But everything looks perfect. But then when you get in there, you're like, I could have done that quarter inch binding a little better than that. You know, everybody, you know, everybody has room for improvement, which is huge. Okay, so now that I've rambled enough and we've actually gotten to meet you, Natalie, (laughs) where can everybody find you? Where can they sign up for either the wait list or purchase a box? And how um, is that gift subscription going to work signing up for it? Because I think that that is something that everybody is going to be interested in. Yes, so So the the box... box Sorry, Sorry, find me on Instagram, Instagram at, at ginger underscore quilter. quilter. My, My website, website is gingerquilterbox.com. 
and the subscriptions are opening soon so i'm gonna i can just just Keep an eye on email or, well, first you have to sign up for my email list, but keep an eye on Instagram and I will let, keep you guys posted on those. Those should be available like the first week of December, hopefully when this airs, those will still be open. And um, did I answer all the questions? Is that? I don't know. I don't listen to myself sometimes. I'm like, she talks too much. That lady talks too much. <laughs> I'm most active on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. You can look up the ginger filter, but I'm most active on Instagram. Okay, awesome. And I will include all of the links to the website, the box, the Instagram, all of the places that you can find Natalie. And for those of you who are listening to the podcast instead of watching on YouTube, the reason why she's the ginger quilter is she has fabulous red hair. <laughs> Well, yep, that is why I am the ginger quilter. It's and if that hair. wasn't why, I made a horrific assumption. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's it. That is exactly why. <laughs> uh, awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Natalie. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. And I look forward to seeing what comes in the next box. Bye for awesome. now. Thanks, Thanks so much. We'll see ya. All right. How much fun was that? Uh, she is just... Everything I love about being a member of this wonderful quilty universe. Uh, she is just a ray of light, so friendly, uh, doesn't think I'm a total weirdo, or at least if she does, she didn't let me know. <laughs> um, and quite frankly, I think that box that she puts together is just wonderful. It, they're manageable projects. They're super well curated and her eye for detail as well as for curating that fabric is amazing. Uh, I would do it just for the stash, honestly, because she picks out some pretty beautiful things. Uh, so again, if you want to find her, you can visit any of the links listed below, either in the show notes or the video description. All right, folks. Now, thank you so much for completing yet another episode of the Stop Scrolling, Start Sewing podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe wherever you listen or watch, and I will see you next week. Now stop scrolling and start sewing.